I put layout on the bottom and I'm going to scribe a line there for the, uh, the two holes. <coughs> Pardon me. You know, it looks a bit like a tombstone. I hope that's not a bad omen. Not that I believe in omens. The holes are laid out, so now I'll center punch them. And I'm ready to drill them five thirty seconds. And these are mounting holes, so they're not real critical. I mounted the tombstone onto a temporary base with drywall screws. And I just check in this surface with a file. And that's pretty darn flat. I don't think that'll be a problem at all with the valve fitting up against it. And while you weren't looking, I went over the mill and I milled uh, the end of this square in exactly the same setup that I milled the end of this square. Now I've got to knock the burrs off. Always get your burrs off, you know, before your next operation so you don't cut yourself and so that the work will lay flat uh, no matter what your operation, whether it's layout or whatever. And then over there on the surface gauge, I'm going to lay this, or, or surface uh, plate rather, I'm going to set this for three quarters and mark it off at three quarters but you certainly could use a combination square for that but I really do love a height gauge and working off of a true surface and these granite plates in this size are super cheap I got that at Grizzly and uh, I picked it up there in Springfield Missouri so I didn't have to pay freight I happen to be down that way anyway so don't think I did something crazy just to save uh, 10 bucks and shipping although that would be $25 shipping more than what the plate I think cost black granite I love it a week ago I put a new motor on my bandsaw the old one smoked out it was made uh, in another country so I put on a US made motor used mind you a slow speed one 1140 I should have shown that in the video and then I also replaced uh, the bandsaw blade, which was five to eight years old, bimetal. And I put on a new bimetal, half inch wide. You know, you get what you pay for. You buy those good blades, they last a long time, as Paul Harvey would say. And I'm going to saw this off a little bit on the outside of the layout line, in case I saw a crooked. And uh, then I will mill it uh, smooth. Uh, on the milling machine uh, and square it up at three quarter inch uh, wide. Always use a sharp blade because cutting on a bandsaw is kind of unpleasant and boring so you want to get through it as fast as you can. And naturally I won't show this whole thing. I have finished sawing it off and now I'm uh, back to the mill and I'm milling it down to the layout line so it's three quarters thick. Now I'm not showing you every uh, every step here and remember uh, I'm not showing you really how to use a milling machine here. That's covered in many of my other videos so this video would be way too long. However do wear your safety glasses and practice all safety rules when operating machinery. And I'll take one more finishing pass to take me to the line. I'm not quite to the line. If you can see, the line is still showing up. Although this dimension, again, is not critical. I have milled it down to three quarters thick. I need to remove the burrs. 
Now if you happen to come up with a piece of stock that's one inch by three quarters, you know, you got all that work uh, done for you, but you probably will not. And now I need to cut it off and then mill it to length so it's the same length as this cylinder, which I will do next. And uh, now the reason I'm not using square stock, it's rectangular, is that we need extra thickness right here for this uh, rod here, which is either threaded into there, depending on how you want to do it, or mine is held with Loctite, but you certainly don't want to run into the bore. So that's why I have provided extra thickness there, and you'll see that on all oscillating engines that uh, you can see where the bore is here, but you need this thickness here for your valving and your support and all of that. So that's why it's not uh, square stock. Now I'm not going to show you cutting it off and milling it to length. I'm going to do that. Then we're ready to chuck it up in a four jaw chuck and do our drilling and reaming. Now you could bore it, drill and bore, but I'm going to drill it and then ream it one half inch and that produces quite a nice finish and that's what I'm after is a, is a good uh, round hole with a, with a nice finish. Well, it's a new day and it's 7 o'clock in the morning and I'm highly energized and I'm continuing on this project and I have uh, cut this off to length, the cylinder, and blued the end, milled it flat and square. I'm at the surface plate set at 375 thousandths and I am marking it. in both directions. Now I will center punch it. And I'm ready to go over to the lathe and drill and ream. I'm at the venerable Atlas Craftsman 12 inch lathe and I've got the work a uh, rough set in the four jaw chuck Remember, it's already center punched, and I brought a center up uh, close to it so that I'm in the ballpark. Now, I'm fairly close, and I like to use these two uh, chuck keys that I made out of old knobs, and uh, it's just quarter-inch uh, uh, mild steel in there. But this works very well for moving uh, the stock back and forth, working one against the other, and then rotating it. 90 degrees and working in the other direction. That gets you pretty darn close. In fact, it probably would be close enough and the job would be done. But I'm going to show you another way now that is just a little more accurate. This also could be done on the Bridgeport Mill in the vise and uh, uh, setting it up with a edge finder and all of that, but a lot of you will not have that equipment and I think it's still faster to do it in the lathe. I've installed the Sterrett center tester, and there's other ways of doing this as well, but I thought I'd show this off, and this was in one of my What It's uh, videos. A lot of people did not know what it is, but uh, a lot of them did as well. And the uh, center uh, right here of the tool, the center rod, is uh, pushed into that center punch mark that uh, you saw me make a little while ago, and it's under spring tension here, because this is a spring. And then came out on me here so I got to get it back in with a little bit of, of, of uh, pressure against it. See the spring bend? Now as I rotate the stock uh, any error will be amplified and I got a center in the tail stock so watch uh, this end of it here. You see I still got a little wobble in it because it's just rough set but now using my chuck keys I will work it uh, back and forth in both directions until <clears throat> there is virtually no wobble here. And this rod is uh, 8 or 10 inches long, so uh, it is quite accurate. And this was uh, used years ago before they had uh, uh, various other indicators. And this is an indicator of sort, and Brown and Sharp made a similar one as well. So now off camera, I'll get it set. It's kind of awkward to do on camera, and then uh, I will verify it and show it to you that, it, that it's running true, or darn near true, on the center. 
that took just a couple minutes and uh, I like to turn the lathe on. Now watch it at the tail stop. Running quite true. Matter of fact, you, you can't see that it's, it's, it's moving at all. And the lathe is running. It was a little bit of a wobble, but remember in a 8 or 10 inch distance uh, that that's been magnified. It's really right on using this method. And uh, you probably won't have that tool, so set it up just using a center, and that'll probably be close enough. I've got my safety glasses on. Make sure you wear yours when you're working on machinery. And I've got a center drill in the tailstock chuck. And uh, always start with a center drill, a short, stubby bit that cannot deflect, and it'll drill the hole right where you want it. Now I'm going to drill a pilot hole in there, and this is quarter inch diameter, nice sharp bit held in the Jacobs chuck. And the, remember the stock is an inch and a half long, and I want a blind hole. I don't want to go all the way through. If I do, I will spoil the work and I have to start over or redesign it and put a head on the engine. But uh, what I like to do uh, quite often is I mark the drill bit with a sharpie right where my fingernail is, and I'm going to go up to that. But you certainly can use the... Uh, uh, quill graduations or uh, uh, indicators or whatever your favorite method is but but this is what I'm going to do and I I laid that off uh, by putting the drill bit alongside the work uh, to, to make sure I didn't uh, or I'm not going to drill too deep Tell when your drill bit is sharpened correctly when you're getting two chips coming out of there that are approximately equal. As you get in deeper, keep backing it out to clear the chips and add more uh, cutting fluid, whatever your favorite is. This hole will be reamed one half inch, 500 thousandths. So this is a 15 30 seconds drill bit and I'm going to open the hole up to that size and I'm not uh, going to mark the drill bit or anything. I will feel this when it hits the bottom of the hole. If you want to mark it or, or measure it, go ahead and do that. Uh, but this is going to leave me with a hole that is, does not have a flat bottom, which I'll talk about momentarily. So 15, 30 seconds, that leaves a 30 second approximately to ream, which is okay in aluminum. Some people want to uh, uh, get within a 64th, but this will do. As I just mentioned, uh, a regular drill bit does not give you a flat bottom hole. You can see here what the shape of the bottom of the hole would look like. So I'm taking an end mill here and I'm going to square off the bottom. Now I do not have a 15 30 seconds end mill. This is a 7 16 which is just a little bit less, but it'll square it up uh, for me quite a bit. And then I'll be able to ream a little bit closer to the bottom of the hole. But remember, remember the reamer also has a bit of a bevel on it, so there'll be some wasted space in there that, that uh, is, is not truly bottomed or truly to size but that won't matter because I'll just shorten the stroke up a little bit on the engine so the piston does not come up into that area. So now I will square up the bottom because I'm only taking off uh, uh, approximately uh, uh, an eighth of an inch now. Until it hits the bottom. There we go. And that's how much it took out. You may have uh, uh, some flat bottom drills. If you do, uh, you can use those or you can grind one uh, that is flat bottomed. I, I didn't want to take the time because I had an end mill. This is a one half inch uh, chucking reamer held in the tailstock chuck. I've slowed the speed of the machine down a little bit. I'm in back ears. It's probably slower than what I need. And I've already squirted some of that cutting fluid into the bore. And I'll go in until I feel the reamer hit the bottom.
there's the finished bore pretty decent finish that I'm satisfied with and you can see what the bottom of the hole looks like that it's not truly flat but uh, fairly flat and will uh, work just fine now there are some chuck marks now from that four jaw chuck and uh, in a soft material you often get those because you're moving it around back and forth in both directions with the uh, jaws pretty uh, uh, snug or tight and I'll take that to the abrasive sander uh, later and just touch it up a little bit but uh, the bore is done as a sidelight uh, this is uh, the Sterrett catalog from 1938 I'm catching up on my reading and that's that uh, number 65 center tester that I, uh, I used earlier and some samples of how it could be used but all that aside, uh, I've taken the other engine apart, the finished engine, and that's what it looks like here as far as this brass uh, stud or pivot uh, rod is concerned. And uh, there's the hole for the uh, steam or the air to go in. And here is the uh, what the piston looks like, and that's a, a brass piston with a brass rod. And I might make it out of steel. It, and I like to make the piston to fit the bore rather than the bore to fit the piston and, and I uh, reamed that half inch but that doesn't mean that it's exactly half inch and I will uh, uh, attempt to make a piston that's within about a half inch or half a thousandth uh, fit but yet moves freely now as far as the other part of uh, the engine is concerned the upright this is where it pivots and this is the uh, inlet and exhaust ports. Those will be laid out uh, later on, not according to a dimension, but transferred. And I suggest you use that method. But for now, I'm going to uh, lay out and drill this eighth inch hole in uh, the tombstone. And then I'm going to uh, lay out and drill the... Uh, of the hole for this and that's also eighth inch also while I'm at it I'm going to lay out and drill this uh, uh, I gotta measure that I believe that's an eighth inch hole and I want that uh, just a little bit below the top but yet it needs to break into the uh, the bore and I will drill that hole all the way through which I did on this one and noticed that it was plugged. Now I didn't have any aluminum to plug it so I plugged it with uh, with brass but that will be used in conjunction with transferring uh, the ports. Now you don't have to use that method but I recommend it. I don't think that that uh, is objectionable. You wouldn't even be able to see that if you, if you used aluminum. So I might go to Ace Hardware and see if I can get some uh, eighth inch aluminum for, for that. That's the center line, and I've already laid out and center punched the hole for the pivot rod. Now, before I lay this one out, I like to double check everything. I'm old school, and I'm taking uh, my depth gauge here, and that's truly the bottom of the hole. So, that's the bottom of the hole there. Now, that is not where I want to drill, but at least I now know where the bottom of the hole is and I will drill that hole a little bit short of it, you know, about where the scriber is right now. I know I'm not going by dimensions, and that may confuse some of you, but this is the way I tend to build some things, especially when it's a one-of-a-kind, and uh, I do not have a drawing. It's something, something that I designed. So now I know where, where this hole will actually be in regards to uh, the bore. The, the end of the bore. 